Sam wants you to enlist in the army, right? I want to help you to increase your sound. And so let's talk about how I've gone about this. So the first thing, airflow. Now, for all of you as players, if you teach, this is probably already standard, right? We do, we've done our, our, our long tones for years. I came back from that jam session, I couldn't hear myself. The next several years was that in the low end of the horn. Just B flat clarinet. Okay, so uh, for those that play bass clarinet, you know how much air it takes to fill this up, this, this big horn. Uh, when you go from that B flat to the bass clarinet, the first thing is like, wow, it takes, it needs so much air. So building that up is crucial. And then in the process of this, you're going to find that you start blowing faster, more and more air in, and at a certain point, the regular mouthpieces that we have won't be able to accommodate it. I started, uh, when I made that switch from B flat clarinet to bass clarinet, I uh, was told, get a Selmer C star. Does anybody use that kind of a standard? And, uh, and after a certain point, it was just like, it was blown so hard that that reed, instead of vibrating, it was just shutting off. So uh, we'll talk about how we contend with that. But that's the first step, building up that air support. So we got a lot of new options that are out here these days. We're gonna talk about some of those. We talked about the importance of, the reason of, um, you see here, open mouthpiece is because otherwise you're blowing so hard, it's gonna close off on you. We're gonna talk about baffles. We got a bunch of materials now. Look, this is crazy how many people here, these vendors have different mouthpieces. This did not exist 20 years ago. We didn't have all these options, right? I know when I made the switch to bass clarinet in 97, you had that summer C star, you had some Van Dorns. Now look at all these vendors, all these options. You got, it's not just saxophone players anymore. So you got the, the traditional rubber, you've got uh, Silas is printing them out of 3D. Come on, it's crazy stuff. People, um, I'm seeing on Instagram nowadays, people are making metal pieces for bass clarinet out of metal. So that, if you feel like that's your solution, that's there to be had. I bought one, by the way. A guy, uh, Arnold Montgomery, down in uh, Louisiana. That sucker, it's beautiful. That sucker weighs so much. <laughs> it's crazy, it's crazy. Things we would never know as clarinetists before this stuff was available to us. So let's talk about how I've gone about it. This is the Todd Marcus journey. We talked already about the importance of having that more open mouthpiece, because as you blow into it, the, the summer sea star, those close ones, they're not gonna cut it anymore. Now, part of the, the challenge is that um, you gotta adjust. Like, we are up here in uh, high altitude, we're making adjustments, but any gear is gonna require adjustments. The next thing is the big baffle. I call this my MacGyver mouthpiece. <laughs> and so this was out of, again, looking at what all these options were available for saxophone players and thinking, what, what is it these, these baffles that saxophone players have, but well, I don't see that as an option for clarinet. Let me explore uh, with that, let me experiment with that. And so uh, I had been with my mouthpiece at the time using a guy in Maine named Bill Street to make the mouthpieces and he kept making them more and more open. And then I wanted to explore a baffle. He said, well, get, get some modeling clay and you create the shape and start there. And I did that, a lot of experimentation. And then at that point, I went to Home Depot because no good bass clarinetist orders some, something off of Amazon or eBay. You go to Home Depot. <laughs> <laughs> and I got epoxy. Does people, do people know what that is? Oh, yeah. Man, how do you all know what epoxy is? <laughs> you all work in construction on this side? That's great. So, uh, you know, you take the epoxy, the two, two compounds, you mix them together, the chemical reaction, and then it made 
that material in there rock hard and and then I shaped it a little bit. And I played on this bad boy for 15 years, maybe longer. Again, things are changing. We got more options now. I love this thing, it's done me well. I did three records with it. Um, it allowed me to hang in there in these kind of intense settings. Now, it was a little bit grittier, and I decided that I wanted to see if I could get a little more warmth in it. Got to a point where I, I wanted, I needed to keep that volume of projection, but I wanted to get more of the traditional bass clarinet warmth and toning. And so, during the pandemic, my project, one of my projects, was exploring all kinds of different stuff in gear. And Sios, I had been seeing these Skittles looking mouthpieces all over the place, and I thought, I'm kind of missing this. And, uh, and then I looked it up and thought, oh, okay, so they're, they're 3D printing it. It's not like cherry flavored reeds and all that kind of stuff, right? <laughs> and so it began a, a conversation with them. And I said, yeah, I'm doing some unique stuff. I got this this big baffle, and can I, can I get my volume projection, not sacrifice that, but get some more warmth in there? And I ended up spending 18 months back and forth. They would send prototypes, I would test it, I would make all the detailed notes and send it back. But in the end, the good news is it was success. And so hopefully you could hear in me playing the instrument just now, you're getting that volume rejection. Maybe I'm not the traditional, the absolute traditional bass clarinet tone. It's a little bit different. It's, we all got our own tone. But you got that warmth in there still. And so that's, that's this thing. Again, what do you see? That big baffle, right? And so that's, that is a big, big thing. I, and I'm curious, I haven't gotten to walk around to the different vendors to see if other folks are exploring that at, that, at this point. But I do think that for us as clarinets and bass clarinet, this, this is something that's unique, if not super uncommon. And I think that one of the things that when people look at my mouthpiece is, they, they say, oh, you got a baffle? Yeah, sure, let me see it. And they're like, oh my god, that's, like, that's a crazy baffle. This is extreme, right? It's extreme. But we're trying, to, we're trying to do something extreme. We're trying to hang in there in a, a, a non-net, uh, in, a, in a big band and play, and not have to switch over to saxophone to keep up with the saxophone. So that's what we did. So did that make your sound brighter by doing that? And is that why you switched to another mouthpiece later on? Because that was your, the one you used for 15 years, right? Yeah. So that one was definitely brighter, uh, and you got a little grit to it, which I liked. Um, and so that's where, with the Silas one, I thought, okay, I don't want to lose that volume and projection, but I do want to get some more of the warmth back in there naturally. So, so I, I achieved that. I feel like, at, and I was to get to the end, and I didn't know if it was going to work out or not, because they were sending the, the, we were getting pretty far in there, and the prototype is that it's still like five, ten percent less than what, what MacGyver here is able to do. But in the end, we, we succeeded on that. So, uh, in the spirit of stuff to try, we've got those here today. So, if anybody wants to try them out, we can, we can do that later on. Uh, I do want to share some testimonials because I think that that's important. I, and I guess that they're uh, <laughs> a little bit chopped off, but I'll read through is the biggest part. The next would be the reeds. Um, who all here is working with cane reeds? Most people, okay. Who is doing any, any synthetic? We've got a few, okay. Uh, for years I was using fiber cells. Yeah, they're there, they're on there, fiber cells. And again, I said earlier about all this stuff 
Don't think that you're just gonna, if you say, Todd, I wanna buy one of these mouthpieces, you're gonna take this and it's gonna be like, oh, I'm gonna do my, my concert next week. Everything is adjustments, right? You change a clarinet, you change your mouthpiece, you change your reed. You gotta put the work in and do give your body and your arm a short time to adjust. With those reeds, I remember the first time I tried to fry myself, that sucker was barking like crazy. It had that volume of projection, but it was pretty raw. Over time, and not that long, you know, over a period of a few weeks, I started getting it back. I started winning that battle, getting it to be more warm. So there's a ton of options now out here. Uh, I actually switched over a couple years uh, ago now to Legere. I felt that that gave me, again, in this quest to get more, get a little away from the grittier, brighter side, and get more to uh, having that warmth. I found the, the uh, Legere offer that for me. You use the European cut? Uh, I actually use tenor reeds. Which cut? Uh, American. I have to look at. I, have to look at <laughs> I, I use a bunch. There's a few of them that, that work well for me. Ligatures. Let's talk about that just real quick. You know all these ligatures. Oh, it's gold plated. It's silver plated. It's platinum plated. It's cloth. Does it make a difference? Has anybody seen this Michael Lower Stern video? Yes. This is a shoelace. <laughs> <laughs> If you find it, if something works for you, boosts up that projection, let me know. I'm curious about it. But for me, the ligature is not a big game changer. We got things like uh, with our pads, you got different materials. You got uh, leather pads, you got like synthetics. Uh, within them, you can get resonators. Brown ones, those are plastic. They got metal ones too. You know, subtle, more subtle, smaller differences, but things that can at least be worth exploring and try out for yourself. Bells, we've got, again, uh, all of this exposure to things that are available to us. I have explored that stuff too. I saw, I see uh, across from Lone Stern is uh, Luis Rosny. Yes, go ahead. No, one more minute. One more minute, okay. Uh, I tried his bell out years ago, and, um, and then I even got creative. You see this, this wooden bell here, it's got curves to it. I found a craftsman, a master woodworker that carved a, a bell out of wood. So I say that to say that I've gone all in. I've gone down that rabbit hole and explored all this crazy stuff. And that mouthpiece is the big difference maker. The baffle is a big difference maker. The reeds are a big difference maker. Again, will we ever be able to match a, a saxophone top volume? No but we can hang in there. Uh, I'm playing a concert tomorrow, uh, along uh, with Virginia McDonald, and, uh, and we're gonna, you know, here we in that large group, here in a small group, so come out and see that, you can hear it in action as well. And, uh, and thanks for hanging out.